Hey guys, so overcoming shyness has never really been an area that was easy to handle for me. Like, you ever wanted the courage to just get up and talk to that cute girl standing alone in the mall? Or you ever just wanted to be that life of the party and not appear to be a mute who can't communicate with a freaking snail? I mean, I've had plenty of moments where shyness pretty much beat me over the head with a hammer, and I still come across moments where shyness gets the best of me. I'm not gonna lie, I see a cute girl, and I don't know what to say, I'm just gonna freeze and be like, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> but one of the main techniques that I've learned to deal with shyness is to simply acknowledge it. And I know what you might be thinking, you might be thinking, oh, mental reach, or is that it? You freaking jerk, That's such an obvious answer. Now I'm going to type mean comments. I mean, that isn't all I have to say. I mean, don't attack me just yet. I mean, whether you're the CEO of Microsoft, Leonardo DiCaprio, or freak, even me, anyone deals with shyness to some degree because it's a natural emotion, such as fear, anger, laughter. Well, laughter isn't really emotion, but you get what I'm saying, trying to say. So, what only makes the clear difference is how each of us approach that irritating shy mouse in our head. And without properly managing your shy mouse, it would then start to manipulate your thoughts and then your feelings towards another person or situation. And before you know it, you're on the dark side, rubbing your hands together, trying to convert other people to troll the world like you. <laughs> uh, but anyway, whenever the shy mouse take control of you, you get scared of someone rejecting you for who you are or they pretty much leave you once you make yourself vulnerable in front of them. And that's where the shyness mouse originates from. And this fear of embarrassment is probably the main reason people hold themselves back from many opportunities. And it's that fear of embarrassment that causes no one to raise a hand whenever the teacher asks if anyone has a question in class because they don't want to appear to be stupid or have no idea what they're learning, even though pretty much everyone in the classroom is probably in the same situation as them. And I'm not gonna lie, I used to be afraid of saying the wrong thing to people constantly. It was like my head was planning for war before I even began a conversation. But that was when I realized life is just too irritating, trying to please freaking everybody and being the person they want me to be. And that's where shyness hurt us the most. We're worried that our true selves aren't good enough for someone else and that they'll eventually reject us for who we are. But ask yourself this question. When you want to speak to someone you're genuinely interested in, are your intentions really set in the wrong place? Do you want to hurt them physically or emotionally? If no, then there's no reason to be afraid to tell someone what's on your mind. I mean, you're not perfect, and you can't expect people to think that way of you either. If you see someone eating something that you have no idea of, don't be afraid to approach and ask them what it is. Sure, that person might be momentarily dazed that a random stranger approached them just to ask them about their sandwich, but it would be like that awkward situation that would just stay that way if you continue stuttering and acting uncertain to why you did that in the first place. When you're no longer trying to figure out what masks to put in front of someone, it suddenly makes the conversation and your approach is much easier. You're relying on what's in your head and your own curiosities rather than the assumptions of what someone might think of you if you say this or that. And let's say that person doesn't like you or your personality. Is that really the type of person you want in your life anyway? Someone who will smile at your face but talk trash behind your back? The best part of revealing about who you really are to someone is knowing that they're accepting you for you. And guys, a method to overcome your shyness also relies to the situation you're handling. Like, some people may find it easier to interact with a group of random strangers at a party, but still get petrified when they're alone with a pretty girl. And some people might find it easier to speak to a girl, but find themselves dumbfounded whenever other people show up and all of a sudden there's a crowd of people near them. In either case, the best method that works for me is to always incorporate a fun conversation while any future intentions. Now what I mean by this is, don't think about how this conversation would determine if she'll be your girlfriend or your future wife or your friend. Just think about what she enjoys doing on her days off and if she actually has a personality you can play with. Don't think about what you could gain from a conversation or interaction with someone. Think of ways you can make their life easier, whether it's putting a smile on their face or giving them some useful life advice. Putting a smile on another person's face is a powerful emotional trigger for both party members. And when you really think in the terms of giving, it shifts your selfish mindsets to more friendly ones. 
And let's remember, shyness is still a normal response we have, and many people have it to some degree, which is higher than other people's. And it usually happens whenever we're confronted with a circumstance that we're not comfortable with. For example, one of the biggest ways shyness affects people is when it comes to approaching random strangers. They're afraid of revealing their true emotions and being criticized for doing something silly and forever being labeled as that person. And the last thing you want to do is say the wrong thing to someone who doesn't even know your name and you will be forever known as that guy. And there's a lot of studies that reveal that extremely shy people normally like to share their issues and talk to people with similar characteristics because it gives both members another person that they can relate to and possibly push their confidence both together. It'd be like having a workout partner who supports you at the gym. And one of the best tips for overcoming shyness is to think of ways you can positively impact another person's life. Put aside your own ego and humble yourself to another person. That way, it subconsciously removes that shy mouse trying to manipulate your thoughts into believing you have to behave a certain way. And in reality, you don't even have to speak that much in a conversation to begin with. People love speaking about themselves enough because it triggers an emotional sense in them that's almost as powerful as drugs. And all you have to do is shut up and keep asking them questions about their lives. Recognize what triggers your shyness and consciously question why it makes you afraid. If you're scared of speaking to a group of people because they might think you're dumb, remind yourself that it's often not what you say that matters, but how you make them feel. If you say something silly, make a joke out of it and humble yourself in front of everybody. Show that you're not afraid of being insecure about who you are and it will make everyone around you more comfortable. So let's not forget, if you want to overcome your shyness, don't take yourself too seriously. Humble yourself and aim to make the person you're speaking to the center of your world. Help them with their life by simply putting a smile on their face. It's easy to give yourself an excuse when you see someone, but at least one time a day, talk to one person you don't know and you notice a spark in your confidence by the end of the week. And if you don't, then I give you full permissions to punch Casper the Friendly Ghost as my way of apologizing. Hey guys, hope you enjoyed. If you want to see more videos, just hit that like button and subscribe. Like, uh, uh, like seriously, subscribe.